after last week's tournament win, we are back in the cash game streets. In this crazy 1-2 game we play, not one, not two, but three pots over $1,000 sitting across the table from a player who absolutely hates my guts. This game is wild, we are going to have one of the biggest wins or biggest losses of our life. Into the game for $500 and we are putting it all at risk in the very first hand. First hand, we've got pocket jacks in the cutoff. Under the gun player makes it 10. There are two callers. It gets to the hijack, who seems like he's the best friend of the guy that hates my guts. He makes it $50 in the dark. My nemesis calls. What am I going to do with all this money in the middle in a premium hand? I have to find a price that these donkeys will call. I make it 300 bucks to go, and they both make the call. Flop is a nightmare. Ace of spades, king of hearts, four of diamonds. Action checks to me. I don't think these morons have anything. I shove for my last $200. We see one fold, and after thinking forever, my arch enemy makes the call. Damn it, we're dead, right? Turn comes down the queen of diamonds. Crap, another overcard. River, ace of diamonds. He hem hauls around, not wanting to show his hand. I know he's trying to slow roll me. He shows five deuce of diamonds for the runner runner flush. This donkey is coming after me, and I am ready for it. Trying to reset, regain our composure a little bit. We just lost a massive pot to one of our least favorite people in the world. Got to figure something out. Got to turn this thing around. We're buying it for 500 more before we look at, down at Ace Five of Diamonds. Great starting hand. We're in middle position. We've got that 500 bucks. We just rebought in for it. There are several limpers of the five dollar button straddle. Should these button straddles even be allowed? No, they shouldn't. Button straddles are terrible for the game. But what can you do? I can't convince people to stop doing it. Under the gun two makes it 20 bucks. Player to my left calls. Another player calls. Lots of calls. We are off to see a flop, which comes down six, five, four, two diamonds. So great flop for us. We've got a pair in the nut flush draw. The initial razor bets, $30. A player to my right calls. I call. We're looking at a turn. Bingo. We hit it right off the bat. We got a flush. Checks to the player on my right who shoves for $150. Obviously, we're making the call here. We're hoping that maybe somebody else can come along also. Unfortunately, all others fold. So we're off to see the river heads up with our opponent all in. We've got a nice size pot here. We've got the nuts. And turns out he was drawn dead. He's got 8-7. So he had a straight, but we've got the nut flush. We take this one down. Yeah, for me, they just say, I don't even want to get on there. Yeah. Oh, you get on the this part right here. We've got pocket kings from the small blind, second best hand ever created, starting off with about 675 bucks. There's a button straddle again, yikes, hate it, can't get rid of it though. I open to 25 and we end up with not one, not two, not three, but four freaking callers. So, off to see a flop which comes down nine high. A little bit of a wet board, we've got two clubs out there. I bet 80 bucks trying to charge all these draws as much as I possibly can. A very crazy player who plays an extremely wide range raises to $200. So obviously not pumped about this development. Don't really know what to do. I think we're gonna have the best hand here often enough. He's usually gonna have some sort of combo draw. Obviously he didn't flop a straight draw here. So yep, time to go ahead and just ship it in there. I go all in and he snap calls. So we are terrified because obviously he could have flopped a set or something in this situation. He says, however, that he has a pair and a flush draw and shows us the queen four of clubs. So we decide to run it twice. We are sweating this run out pretty aggressively. Turn comes down, six of spades. So we can sweat a little bit less. River comes down, the jack of diamonds. So we lock up the first board, awesome. Now can we win this whole pot, this massive pot? Turns out the second turn is the seven of clubs. So not so much, not gonna be taking this one down. River is insignificant. We end up chopping this thing up. Massive hand though. I'm fine with how we played it, I think. Just wish we could have had a better result. Wish we would have ran it once. The odds of it folding right In this hand we tangle with one of the best players in the game. We've got Ace Jack from the cutoff. Started this hand off with about 700 bucks. There's several limpers to me. I raise it up to 30 bucks and we get no less than four callers. So yeah, we're going very multi-way every single hand it seems like. Flop comes down, nine, eight, deuce. Not the best flop for our hand, obviously. Actions of checking through. So checking through this many ways, kind of weird, but whatever, we're trying to hit a pair here. And that's exactly what we do on the turn. We turn in the Jack of Diamonds. Action checks to me. I'm gonna bet 55 bucks this time. And only this very competent player that I'm kind of looking to avoid a little bit makes the call. He's on the button, so he's in position on us. That kind of sucks. River does not suck though. It comes down the two of spades. Action checks to me. I decide we're gonna go ahead and go for some value here. It might be a little bit thin, but after turning top pair, top kicker, I feel like it's a little bit disguised. We bet out 85 bucks. And after a little bit of a tank, our opponent ends up making the call. We show our hand, we're good. He mucks, but later says he had jack 10. So we just had him out kicked. Pretty good situation for us, picking up some much needed chips. And we are well on our way to getting back to even in this game. You, you have a bu you have a bunch of left-handed clubs. It's a pile. Half of them were when I'm.
Following that ace jack hand, we look down at a pretty one. We've got queen 10 of diamonds. We've got 40% of a royal flush. We're in the cutoff. We're starting the hand off with about a thousand bucks. Hijack opens to 15. I call, small blind calls, and we are off to see a flop. Pretty good one for us. We're flopping top pair with backdoor diamonds here. So we flop a hey, monster. Action checks to me. I'm not letting this check through. I bet 25 bucks and we get a call from the hijack. Turn comes down, pretty mediocre one. It's the king of hearts. So our flush draw doesn't get there and now we no longer have top pair. I decided to go ahead and bet anyway. We've got the flush draw to fall back on here and we could have some kings in our range and who knows, maybe we have the best hand right now. We bet $60. He doesn't think about it for too long before making the call. So now we think he has a flush draw little bit worried that we could be up against a better flush draw, but it would have to only be the nut flush draw because obviously if he has a king here, I don't really know. I don't really know how he's going to play it. River comes down the six of spades, so we bricked our flush draw. He checks to me. I decide we're not going for any more value in this hand. We check it back. I show my hand and he mucks. So we take down another one. We're officially in the black on this session. Uh, crazy game. Maybe we can run it up here. We're looking down at pocket queens from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about $1,100 in front of us. So yeah, we're back in the profit. We're up a hundred bucks. We've got a ton of money in front of us compared to what we are normally playing. We've got a new player to my right who raises up to 30 bucks over some limpers. That seems like a big size, but it's not that big given this game. I go ahead and raise it up to a hundred with my pocket queens. Um, I don't think this is a big enough size. I think I should make it like 150 or 120. I know that maybe sounds a little bit crazy, but this game was playing a lot bigger than a 1-2 game. We see the crazy player make the call from the small blind, and the new player, the initial raiser, also makes the call. So we're off to see a flop in a very large pot. Flop is 10-7-3 with two clubs. Action checks to me. I think we definitely have to bet out here. I think we're still in good shape against everything. The kings or aces is going to raise against us. We can be a little bit afraid of like pocket 10s, maybe pocket 7s. But after it checks to me, I just feel like we have to put some more money in here. I bet $200, the small blind calls. So it's just me and this freaking crazy guy off to see a turn in this ridiculously large pot. Turn is a two of spades. He checks. I go ahead and bet $400, leaving myself about 300 bucks behind. Should I have just ripped it in here? Maybe? I'm not really sure. Like, what is he actually going to have here? He's such a psycho. Like, he can pretty much have it anything at this point. He goes way into the tank, like a very long tank, longer than I would expect from this guy, especially on the turn. And eventually he makes the call. So we have a ridiculously large pot. River comes down a pretty weird one. It's the five of diamonds. So all kinds of draws out there. This guy can have some random two pairs. I don't really know what to do at this point. I'm actually pretty frustrated. I didn't want to end up in this situation. Like, why couldn't he have just like laid this one down? I don't know. He shoves all in, which is something I had kind of expected him to do earlier in this hand if he was bluffing. I definitely think he was bluffing. This is such a weird situation. I'm super frustrated. I end up calling it off and we get shown some really bad news, guys. He has 7-5 offsuit for a rivered two pair. Do I have any clue what he was doing in here? No. Do I have any clue how he's calling this raise preflop? No. We're super deep? Yes. So I guess that's the only logic behind it. I don't even know. I am incredibly tilted at this point. I just lost a well over $2,200 pot. We are steaming. We are kind of freaking out. Time to get out of here. We are not buying in again. Should we have? Maybe. Was the game good? Seems like yes. I just couldn't stomach that big of a loss. We're out of here. This was a tough one. Biggest pot of my life that I've lost. Well guys, we just lost the uh, biggest pot of our life, I think. Pretty sure that was the biggest pot of my life. I guess I can shove the turn. Don't really know what else I can do. I think if he's gonna call 400 there, I guess he's gonna talk himself into calling 700. Uh, didn't think this player was quite that bad. Uh, yeah. I don't know, can I maybe find a fold because I've got the queen of clubs, so I'm blocking some flush draws that he can have? I don't really know. It's hard to play against people that play any two cards. Don't really know what to say. feel kind of numb. Um, yeah. Sucks. Poker sucks. Mm, that's a tough one. Well, don't really have too much to say. Super tilted. I'll, uh, I'll take a pity like. If you like uh, watching someone torture themselves, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's a great way to support uh, me doing this to myself. So have a good one. See you guys next week. I'm out.